Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dividend Challenge where you can learn about the art and beauty of dividend investing. So today we are week 42 of the Dividend Challenge, which I deposit at least $200 into my dividend investing portfolio every single Monday. And by the end of this video, I will also give you four next best investments other than the stock market, because as you know, there is a lot of uncertainty and volatility within the stock market. And a lot of people are starting to look elsewhere. Where else can I invest without bearing so much risk? Without further ado, and I know some people hate me for saying that, let's get started. So today is Wednesday, June 24th. Let's take a look at my smallest portfolio first, which is my Weibo portfolio. So as you can see here, my overall account value is $1,124.88. In total, I am down by $148.30 and I'm down by 11.6%. And I did do a major change. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Let's take a look at what I currently have. So I have McDonald's, Alteryx, Nokia, Bank of America, AT&T, and Tapestry. And so you might, you might see that something is missing compared to last week. And the one thing that is missing is TVX. So yes, I did sell TVX because it is getting delisted in the middle of July, I believe. And so they are going to stop issuing in the beginning of July and they're gonna get delisted in the middle of July. And the reason is because apparently TVIX isn't making as much money as um, they want TVIX to make and so that's why it is getting delisted and it's not just TVIX and not just VIX but also the opposite of TVIX, the opposite of VIX, even the opposite stock is also getting delisted. And so that is the whole situation. That is why I am planning to sell it. And um, at this time TVIX, the price just kept getting lower. Let's just take a look at TVIX. So over here, you can see, I don't want to rate you. <laughs> Let's take a look at weekly. So weekly, you can see the peak is over here and then it just keeps going lower and lower. When we click into here, here it is, trade confirmation. So over here, you can see my DEI and TVIX. DEI is just my free stock and then my TVIX, which I cannot show, I cannot enlarge. Over here, if you look very closely, I have sold this at 127 and 45 cents. And so this is what I've done with my TVIX and DEI is just my free stock. And another good thing about Weibo, other than the fact that it's really confusing and even till today, I don't fully know where things are because it's just like so spread out and so hard to find. Another good thing about Weibo is that you can do paper trading, which means you are able to use fake money to um, increase your fake net worth and just to get a feel of the market to see. What is your investing style? How do you want to invest? Do you want to check the market every single day? These are all things that you can achieve with paper trading just to know your own personality and which investment strategy will work for you. And so over here, you can see that I have work, Tesla, Ultrix, and McDonald's as my fake money paper trading. And currently I am down by $4,858.43, down by 0.49%. And this is purely my playground. I don't really do much with this. And um, yeah, this is the situation. I don't really care about the gain and loss, but this is for demonstration purposes only. So I'm not worried about this at all. But there's also another good thing about Weeble, and it's that you can get two free stocks valued up to 1400 for the second stock if you deposit $100 into your newly opened Weeble account. And so be sure to use my link in the info box to get your free stocks. And just to give you a glimpse of what are the free stocks that I have been getting, Weeble is actually like really generous with the free stocks. So here are the free stocks that I've been getting. I have a lot of DEI. It seems like they're in love with DEI and AVT. All of them are like 20, 30 bucks, which is like a lot more generous than <clears throat> Robin <Hood. clears throat> kind of low. And uh, yeah, these are just some of my free stocks. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with the free stocks that I'm getting. And if you want to get also free stocks and go to my info box and click onto the link to open your own Weibo account and get your two free stocks. And now that we've talked about my Weibo portfolio, let's take a look at my M1 finance portfolio. So this is my M1 finance portfolio. Currently I'm 
down again. I'm down by 0.99%, down by $218.11. When we click into the slices, you can see the performance of tech is still up by 41.57%, which is honestly pretty awesome. I believe majority, yes, majority is from Tesla. Tesla's up by 56.22%, up by $862.95, which is Wow, shocking. Like I expected Tesla to go up, but I did not expect Tesla to go up by so much. Today, Tesla's price is at $960.85, which is um, by the day it's down, but it's still really high, it's almost a thousand. And um, if you click into it, you can see my average cost, my average share price is $561.98. And this is the beauty of using M1 Finance because you are able to buy fractional shares, even if you don't have let's say $561 to buy the full share of Tesla. And this is how I started. I started buying Tesla last year when the prices were still really low. And that is why I'm able to get 56.22% in gains because I started early. And even though I did not have enough money to buy the full share, I did buy a fractional share of Tesla. So that is why I love M1 Finance so much. And it's also pretty mindless. I don't necessarily have to time the market or to know the exact price I wanna buy at because and One Finance does it automatically for me as long as I automatically transfer money into my accounts every single week, it will automatically allocate it to the different slices and to the different stocks. In addition, you can see Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, which is Google, Visa, Alteryx are all doing really well, especially Alteryx is also a buy a lot and I haven't seen anyone else buy Alteryx. And so pretty great. In the real estate slice, it is a down again, down by 11 point. 4%. And so NRZ, Realty Income, Store Capital, LTC, Wealth Tower, Simon Property Group are all down. And by far the one that got hit the most is Simon Property Group because you probably know that it is a rate for malls and right now malls are still not open. And so it is not a surprise that this is down. Whenever you look at any stock, keep in mind that there's a company, <laughs> there's a company behind the ticker symbol. And so you really have to think about this in terms of can this company make money? What are the current volatility factors that will affect this company? Let's say if currently we're in the middle of the pandemic, which we are, then are malls going to open? If malls are not going to open, then what's going to happen to a REIT that consists of mostly malls? That's mostly about malls. And then you can see over here, bonds, I'm up by 4.28%. So I have LQD, BNDX, SHY, IEI, IEF, and SPHT, which SPHT is actually down by a lot, down by 14.96%. And this is technically not a bond. I feel like every single video I have to explain this, but um, this is a high dividend, low volatility ETF. And the reason why I put it here is just for like simplicity reasons, for aesthetic reasons. And I just don't wanna have like a random ETF sticking out outside of all my slices. And the good thing about M1 Finance is that it can keep you really, really organized. You can just put all the stocks into its perspective slices. And so it's just like one beautiful pie. I really, I really like that about M1 Finance. And the other slices, the other sectors I have includes finance, healthcare, consumer, telecom, and utilities. To see the full breakdown of exactly what is in my portfolio, of course, you can go to my info box, but you can also check out this video, which I explain also how much, how much did I get paid in terms of dividend income. And spoiler alert, I got paid more than 20 times from just dividend income last month in May. So check this video out to see exactly what got me paid, what paid me, what companies paid me in terms of a dividend income. And now that we have covered M1 Finance, let's go to my largest portfolio, which I also have a pretty big announcement to make. So this is my Fidelity portfolio, which is my largest portfolio, and it is also mostly a growth portfolio. The reason why my growth portfolio is so big, even though I'm a dividend investor, is because during March, during the whole market crash, market downturn, I did buy a lot of growth stocks just to take advantage of the discounts that I see everywhere. And so that is why my growth portfolio is so much bigger than my dividend investing portfolio, which sounds kind of ironic, but it just makes sense to me. And you can see that I have fallen off the 90K mark. So there are several factors that cause this. So number one, yes, the market did go down by quite a lot today. And uh, number two is that I did withdraw some money out of this account. So the cash balance, I used to have 6,000 of cash balance in this account, but then I pulled it out and put it into 
resume my other account because I have to use it for something else. And so over here, you can see that my current account value is $88,111.76. And today I have lost $3,281.19, down by 3.59%, but my one year rate of return as of May 31st, 2020 is still 26.55%. And when you take a look at my positions, you can see over here, CCL, I have Boeing, 3M, Intel, Uber, Tapestry, Starbucks, Revolve, MasterCard, Elf, Visa, Disney, Baba, Tesla, Facebook, and PSEC, which is paying me dividends. And you can see, it's a freaking bloody shower today. Every single thing is down, but when you look at the total gain and loss, you can see over here, um, by far, I am only experiencing red in CCL and Boeing, which is really expected, CCL. No need to explain, this is a cruise company and no one's really going to cruises because of the pandemic. And we also don't know how long this is gonna be, like how long are people not going to go on cruises? I know I'm not. And so I'm also not like buying more into this company. Right now, I'm just kind of just letting it be. I don't have that that much into this company compared to everything else. I only put how much in here? Well, I have put 5,000 in here, which is not a small amount, but compared to the rest of my holdings, it's not the biggest. And then I also have Boeing, which you probably know like the with the whole scandal, the 787 Max and um, the whole like blaming on the pandemic, how, you know, this company, I also stopped buying. I also stopped buying Boeing. I'm not planning to buy any more Boeing. And that is just the case. I am just letting it sit here and hopefully it recovers even if it doesn't. Most of my other stocks are still in the greens. And so when we filter by the largest gain, you can see Facebook is almost up by $10,000. Tesla is up by $3,000. I did sell some Tesla as explained in this FOMO video and you'll know exactly like what happened, how much I lost, but you know, that is the nature of the game. Even though Tesla is up by 112%, I did sell some early and that's just the nature of the game, being FOMO, being human. And I also have Baba, which is up by $2,607.19. It's up by 22.83%. And next up, I have Disney, Visa, Elf, MasterCard, Revolve, Starbucks, Tapestry and Uber. So these are the stocks in my Fidelity portfolio. And as promised, I will give you a couple tips on what to invest next because I know this is like kind of an uncertain time. We're finally seeing the bloody showers again, as people expected. We don't know how long this bloody shower is gonna last, how much more the market's gonna drop. And so here are the next best investments that you might wanna consider. And so as promised, here are the four next best investments. This is a mouthful. Ne next best, next best investments that I'm going to share with you. And so number one, of course, is real estate. I have been kind of looking at real estate, not entirely because as you know, I just bought a house last year. And so it's not that long ago and it's not even been a full year. It's been like, I wanna say maybe six months. And so this, House that I'm living in is still pretty new to me and um, I still enjoy it a lot. So if I were to buy another house, it'll be strictly a rental property. I probably wouldn't wanna move again because it's just too much moving. But then real estate is something that could potentially be a good investment. And when you think about real estate, you really have to think about supply and demand. So during the pandemic, yes, there is a lot of uncertainty and it is possible that a lot of people's cash are tied up and a lot of people are not willing to spend money. There's a lot less supply in the market which means this will drive prices up. And at the same time, the banks are tightening their borrowing rules because obviously the banks want to keep their cash. They want to make sure they can survive the pandemic. They want to survive the market uncertainty. And so it is also harder for people with like lower credit scores to get the same amount of loans as before. And so this is also something that you want to take into consideration, even though right now there could be slightly less demand in terms of the housing market. There's also a lot less supply and it is also increasingly harder for you to get approved for loans. And so that is number one, real estate. The second investment is gold. And so gold is still something that I'm kind of speculating. I have not really made the commitment yet. I currently don't have any gold in my portfolio, but I am looking into this. And there are a couple reasons of why people want to look into gold. First of all, gold is a pre-recognizable asset across like global 
globally, in the global market, people know that gold is valuable. And this is probably something that, you know, you can't really change. Gold has always been recognized as a really valuable asset. And so even, even if one of the currencies were to fail, gold is unlikely to completely fail. But then there are a couple arguments about gold. Some people say you should only get physical gold. And some people say you should only get like GLD. You should only get it in the form of stock, in the form of the stock market. And so this is still something that I'm currently just watching, speculating. I don't entirely know if I want to buy gold. But for those of you who are opinionated in terms of buying or not buying gold, please let me know your reasons because I'm really curious to know what are your reasons behind buying or not buying gold. And the third investment is investing in businesses. And this is seriously a very high risk investment. But as you know, the general rule of thumb is that higher risk, higher return. And so yes, it's possible that you're gonna lose all your money, but it's also possible that you're gonna gain back your money like tenfold or even a hundredfold. And my rule of thumb when it comes to investing in businesses is actually really different from um, a lot of the, I wanna say a lot of the typical advice out there. A lot of the typical advice are like, oh, we should do the SWOT analysis, the strength, the weaknesses, the opportunity, the threat of the company, of the business. You have to look at the external factors. You have to look at the industry. You have to look at the competitors. But in my opinion, if I were to invest in a business, I want to look at the founder. I want to look at whoever's leading the business. I want to look at the CEO. The reason why I do this is I believe for a startup to like rise or fail is really, really dependent on who is leading it for the same business idea, like even for, let's say, Snapchat. Snapchat is not the only company that comes up with disappearing images through chats or um, image-driven chats. It, it is definitely not the first company that came up with that. And at the time that Snapchat was getting popular, there were like other apps that were doing similar things too. And one of my friends, he's a software engineer, he also made a similar app as Snapchat, but his app didn't take off, Snapchat did. And so this is just an example of sometimes it's not about the idea Idea. Sometimes people can have same business ideas, but there's also who is leading it and there's also the luck that's involved. So for a lot of the very memorable companies out there, you probably also know a lot about the CEO. For example, Apple, Steve Jobs, like you know a lot about this. For example, Elon Musk, Tesla, you also know a lot about this. So there are a lot of examples out there of CEOs who are just really, really charismatic and they are just really out there Probably in the very beginning, their businesses are not proven to make money yet, but investors invest in these businesses, not necessarily just because of the business idea, but also because of the entrepreneur, of the person who's leading it. And so this is my rule of thumb. When I invest in businesses, I really want to know who is this founder? Like, who is the person behind this business? Who is the person leading this business? Is this person trustworthy? Do I see the element in this person that he or she is going to do whatever it takes to get it done? Does he or she have integrity? Does he or she match with my own moral, like ethical standards? These are all important to me if I were to invest in a business. And this is just something that's slightly different from the mainstream idea of you have to be really logical when you think about investing in businesses. I personally think it's more important to get to know the owner or the business owner or the CEO to know where this business is going because it's not just about the business idea. It's not just about the technology. It's so much more than that. And the fourth one, the fourth investment that you can make, which I believe is actually high return and low risk is actually investing in yourself. And I know this is like such a buzzword in the entrepreneurial space, in the online space. And everyone's like, you know, get a high income skill, get a high paying skill. And I know this is such a buzzword, but it is really, really true. As a corporate accountant, there is no way, absolutely no way that I can live my current life, buy my own house at the age of 24 if I don't have any other stream of income. And that is just me being real. I'm not gonna like BS you and be like, oh my gosh, you should like definitely go to an accounting school and get your accounting degree and work for a big four firm and then go private and then you can live my life. I'm not gonna BS you with that. Yes, I'm proud of my career. I'm proud of what I've done, what I've achieved. I'm proud of my education at USC if you can see my diploma. 
But at the same time, the reason why I'm at today, the reason why I can, you know, have all these income streams, 16 streams of income to date, is because I keep on investing in myself. I keep on investing in high paying skills, high income skills. It's such a buzzword, but honestly, the best investment that you can ever make in anything is actually in yourself. Because keep in mind, you are the one who's making money, right? Unless you have a sugar daddy, that's a different story. I mean, if you do, then I guess you don't even have to watch my video because your sugar daddy is gonna take care of all of that. But let's say if you don't have a sugar daddy, which I'm sure it's the case for a lot of people, then you really have to think about who is making the monies, the monies in your life. If you don't have a sugar daddy, if you're financially independent from your parents, then who is making the money? If you are making the money, wouldn't it make logical sense for you to invest in yourself because you are the one making money? Because you are using your own skills to make money? A lot of people, when they think about making money, when they think about you know expanding their current income, they just think about how do I get promoted at my job? How do I get a raise? How do I get a promotion? How do I jump to a different company doing the same thing and getting paid more? This is a box that they're trapped in, but how about getting more high income skill, getting more high paying skill, expanding your current knowledge, maybe learning a new skill like coaching people. Coaching people is also a high income skill that I teach about. How about this? And of course, I know a lot of people, they're still like kind of confused. What is coaching? What is this online stuff? What is online coaching? Sounds sketchy. I don't know much about it. So I wanna make it like really, really hassle-free for you. So just join my Facebook group. You'll learn so much more about just wealth building, coaching, anything in between being a corporate employee and being a coach. It is called Corporate to Coach Network. This is my private Facebook group and I invite all of you to just join and take a look. We talk not just about coaching, but also general personal finance wealth building tips. Just a couple of days ago, we had this long extended conversation about 401k plans and how do you choose your investments? How do you choose how much you should match, how much you should put into your 401k? This group definitely has a lot of valuable information when it comes to coaching, entrepreneurship, and wealth building in general. And I invite all of you to just take a look. This is totally free and risk-free for you. And I just want you to stay open-minded and just take a look at what is available to you and what you can do to increase your wealth and invest in yourself. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I really, really, really am grateful that you keep checking in every single week for my dividend investing journey. My goal is to grow my portfolio to six figures, to six figures in the next two years. And fingers crossed, let's hope I can get there, grow my dividend portfolio to six figures. See you in my next dividend investing video.